the perfect side hustle. It got me through school, a new job, and getting into my first apartment. There's so much I can sell. Bags, accessories, home decor. From May 15th to June 4th, new listings will be entered for a chance to win $10,000. Terms apply. Listen, your deodorant just has to work. I use Secret, aluminum free. Just swipe and it lasts all day. Secret helps eliminate odor instead of just masking it. And hours later, I still smell fresh. Secret works. Oh, yes. <laughs> Tomorrow, E.T.'s special tribute to Tina Turner. I don't like my voice, but I like my attitude towards it. <laughs> Untold stories and rarely seen moments with the queen of rock and roll. Here I am, you guys. Come and see me. Make sure you check that out. We've got one more thing to show you before we say goodbye. Remembrances in Uvalde as we mark one year since the tragic shooting at Robb Elementary. People coming together today to remember those 21 lives lost and KSAT has been in Uvalde all day. And as we remember those lives lost, questions still being asked about the response from law enforcement that tragic day. Next, where the DA investigation now stands. And Uvalde Strong, how the community is moving forward one year later. Please keep these family, families of these angels and their precious guardian teachers, Irma Garcia and Eva Mireles, in your embrace. Give them the solace to know that they are not alone. That they will always have family, friends, and a community to be by their side, even in their darkest moments. Somber observances held throughout the day as people remember the tragedy and the victims of Robb Elementary. The Texas flags lowered to half staff to honor the 19 children and two teachers whose lives were taken that day. There's been a heaviness that many have been feeling today, no place more so than the city of Uvalde itself. And we have had teams throughout the day in Uvalde, including our own Stephania Jimenez. And Stephania, so many people, especially the victims' families, hard to believe that a year has passed. So describe the atmosphere for us there today. So here's the thing, Myra and Steve, so much has changed, yet so much has still stayed the same. And that's something that the families of the victims will, will tell you. There is still sadness, there's grief, there's disappointment. Right here, we're at the Uvalde County Fairplex, where in about 30 minutes, there's going to be a vigil to honor those who were lost exactly one year ago today. But everywhere you look in Uvalde, there are tributes. Let's go back to one that was happening earlier today at 1132, there was a butterfly release exactly one minute before the shooting began at Rob one year ago. The butterflies are significant because Uvalde is in the migration path for these butterflies. So these kids here, they grew up seeing these butterflies and the families believe that when the butterflies appear, the angels are near. Now, exactly one year ago, I was actually standing in this exact same spot. The media was here at the Fairplex waiting for a news conference to begin to learn more information about the shooting. The then superintendent, Hal Harrell, was there. We also know that the, uh, poli the then police chief, Pete Arredondo, was also there. When they started that news conference, it was only around for about two minutes. They only spoke for two minutes. At that point, we didn't know how many people had been shot, how many people were in the hospital, how many people died. And today, people still have a lot of questions. Some people are still asking about those four, some, uh, some 400 law enforcement officers from different agencies across the state who were outside of Robb Elementary School exactly one year ago today, yet they didn't go inside of the rooms where those children were shot. People are asking whether any of them are going to be charged for their inaction. KSAT investigates Dylan Collier actually spoke to an investigator, a legal expert, about this issue. Watch. A year later, it is footage that is still difficult to watch. A Robb Elementary School hallway filled with law enforcement personnel while 19 students and two teachers lay dead or dying in two classrooms while five of the 376 peace officers who responded to the massacre 
have since been fired or resigned while facing possible discipline action. No one there that fateful day has been criminally charged. And with the assistance of and the District Governor's Attorney Office. Christina Mitchell, whose prosecuting region includes Uvalde County, has given no indication when or even if that will ever happen. Investigations into police conduct can be challenging, um, especially in a situation where there's a lot happening at once. Alexandra Klein is an assistant professor at St. Mary's University School of Law. She points out that Texas officers can be held criminally liable for omissions or a failure to act, but with an important caveat that applies here. They aren't required to, if doing so would expose them or someone else to a risk of bodily injury. If you have an omission of failure to act, you have to prove that there's a legal duty that was breached. Klein says felony injury to a child by omission or child neglect charges could be in play, but adds it's tough to know for sure without seeing the full case file. Mitchell, who declined our request for an interview for this story, instead sent us the same written statement she released more than 10 months ago. It reads in part, quote, my goal is to secure justice for the victims, their families, and the citizens of the 38th Judicial District. This goal cannot be accomplished unless there is a thorough investigation buttressed by fairness, integrity, and impartiality free from political and media pressures. If the Texas Rangers and the, the police felt that disciplinary actions were appropriate, then they were probably warranted. It's harder to say whether criminal investigations are appropriate, but certainly, you know, people who've been in those situations, it, the victims' families deserve real answers about what happened and what went wrong that day. For KSAT Investigates, I'm Dylan Collier. You know, the statute of limitations for most misdemeanors is in Texas is two years, and it's at least that long for any felony. So that means that Mitchell has at least another year before some of these possible cases could expire. Steve, Myra? It's still hard to take that we have so many unanswered questions a year later, Stephanie. Let's talk a little bit about the past year, though, and let's switch from an investigation to honoring the victims. People from all over the country, not just in South Texas, have come up with their own way to honor those who were lost, creating art, donating books, money, yeah. their time, you name it, countless different ways. Stephanie, do you feel like that's an effort that's still being felt there a year later? Yeah, being felt here and everywhere. You know, it's important to note that when the 21 lives were taken last year, this wasn't just Uvalde's tragedy. People felt the loss, felt that pain of, of those 21 innocent lives that were taken. And that's why the tributes to Uvalde really go beyond Uvalde's borders. Uh, an artist from San Antonio who himself was a shooting victim when he was younger has a message to the children of Uvalde and also for those who continue to grieve. Our Ursula Perry has more. This painting, one in a series that artist Rex Hausman calls his hunting blind series. Each is inspired by nature, and this one is for the children and community of Uvalde. The San Antonio native has more insight into what happened in Uvalde a year ago than most. He, too, was shot, nearly killed in a gang initiation when he was a student just walking from class. There was one dude that, one dude that was pulling the gun, one guy watching, and then two guys in the car. What brought that young man yeah. to think it was okay to end another person's life because of peer pressure? To get into the gang, I have to end someone else's life. That's awful. Hausman survived and now thrives as an artist whose following worldwide is growing. This painting has been shown at the Vatican in New York and other art hotspots. But it isn't for sale. It's for Uvalde to hang in the ecumenical center there to help with the healing. It's an offering, man. Like, life happens, dude. Like, bad things happen to good people. And I think that's what people have the hardest. Like, the hardest thing is not getting shot. It's the why. Like, why did this happen to me? God allows stuff to happen. His faith is strong. He has forgiven his shooters and found a future. And he hopes Uvalde will too. So through the Lord's Prayer, I forgave the guy. And that's in, internally, I guess that heals a lot. But externally, it makes you do stuff like this. And you just, you're so thankful for life. Like, you're so thankful for every day. 
You're so thankful that you can paint, that you're here to see this. And I think that's the message. You have to get really up close to see all of the messages to Uvalde that Hausman has embedded in his brilliant picture here. In search of color, it reads right here. And here it says, Ofrenda to las mariposas, the butterflies of Uvalde. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. So hope, hope is the glue that holds these families together. They're united through, through pain, through, through grief, but they also want to keep fighting for change. They don't want other families to go through this. And that's exactly why an organization here that was created by the families of the victims was created. It's called Lives Rob. That's part of their mission. It's a nonprofit. They're fighting for gun control. They're actually organizing a vigil that's set to take place at the memorial here in Uvalde at 7.30. But before that, as we mentioned before, Steve and Myra, there's going to be another vigil here at the Fairplex at 5.30. And of course, we'll be here for that. We'll bring you more on that when we see you at 6 o'clock. For now, we're live here at the Uvalde County Fairplex. Stefania Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. All right, Stefania, thank you. We can't forget about the survivors as well. Some of the students who put themselves at risk to get help for their friends that day. That's why last month, two 11-year-old girls were honored during a ceremony. The award for Texas v Kid Hero of the Year goes to Mia Cerillo and Chloe Torres. Mia Cedillo and Chloe Torres were honored with the Kid Hero Award at this year's public safety conference in Galveston. Both of the girls were trapped in their classrooms. They called 911 to get help for their classmates during the shooting. Mia's parents are glad their daughter was recognized. We're excited and happy and just we're proud. Proud. It was a proud moment for us. There are countless stories that loved ones and the entire community are sharing one year later. So our coverage does not end here. Tonight at 9, a KSAT special, one year in Uvalde. Jay suffered a gunshot wound to his upper right thigh. He was like, Mom, I just ran. I saw the backpacks and I hid under him like if I was dead. He couldn't move. And he tried not to move until help came but then he didn't know if help was really there because of the person the personation that the shooter was doing of trying to be a cop inside the classroom that's cassandra martinez retelling the details of the nightmare her son lived through that fateful day at rob elementary tonight more of his story of recovery and how the families of those who have died have had to put their lives back together our hour-long special one year in uvalde tonight at nine Let's take a look outside right now at traffic at this hour. I-35, Loop 410 here, slow going as it usually is, but no real big issues to make you aware of out on the roads right now. Still to come here at 5, the Robb Elementary shooting intensified the need to tighten school security. Billions earmarked to school districts across the country for that very purpose. A look at some of the changes one local school district has implemented since that tragedy. A look at what we're working on for the news at 6 o'clock today, continuing our coverage on the one-year mark of the shooting at Robb Elementary. As the community comes together today in honor of the victims, people are still looking for so many answers. At 6 o'clock, we hear from the attorney now representing the family of Maya Zamora, one of the survivors. I think the approach to the lawsuit is fairly simple. There's a problem in this country that's reached pandemic levels. And there is a lawsuit where that lawsuit stands and what needs to happen before the family sees any ending. That story and more today on the News at 6. The one month after the shooting at Robb Elementary, the federal government passed the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. It allocated more than $12 billion towards mental health and school safety measures nationwide and one of the first grants went to districts like San Antonio ISD to make their buildings safer. Courtney Friedman was there when Senator John Cornyn toured a local school to see those changes. It's hard to think about just thinking about what happened last year in Walde. On the one year mark of the Robb Elementary massacre, Cotton Academy principal Rowan Hamaday talks to us about changes she's had to make to her school 
so a shooting doesn't happen there. It's sad, but it's something that we have to be prepared for. Over the last year, more than one billion federal dollars have been allocated to what's called hardening schools, keeping dangerous people out and strengthening communication inside. A chunk of that went to SAISD campuses. And yesterday, Senator John Cornyn toured Cotton Academy to see those changes. And then we've also got our intercom system right. in the event of an emergency. The doorbells with the cameras on the outside, our first line of defense, those have been updated because some of them or older. Our police department can also see what's going on in the event of an emergency. Inside, they went from six cameras to 30. In Uvalde, we know that the radios were a big issue. So here at Cotton Academy, these radios are brand new to enhance the communication system. This is the earpieces connected to my radio. Um, it doesn't come off because that communication in the event of an emergency is critical. I was impressed with all the um, layered efforts to try to make sure that uh, they are safe. And so that was very encouraging to me, but we still have work to do. Hamaday was relieved to hear Senator Cornyn say that. It has to be consistent, right? And we have to push for additional funding. We need the funding for ballistic film, for additional fencing. So she can keep her promise to parents that she's doing everything in her power to keep their kids safe. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Let's turn to the forecast now with a look outside with live cam. Pretty picture out there. We got some clouds off in the distance and some more chances of storms to talk about. Yeah, we had some overnight rain last night. We did. It moved through right around 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, so pre-dawn. Now, I have to say that the chance for storms tomorrow is very small, though. Like this morning, there's a small window where we could see a passing quick shower or storm. Even the chance a little bit less than this morning, to be honest with you. But let's go ahead and take a look at the day today. It was warm. It, we got up to 88 degrees, one degree shy of the average high of 89. And as you look at the radar right now, there's a very small area of showers. This is all that is left of the uh, heavy rain that fell across parts of this, the hill country. Take a look at that near Thelma. The showers actually dying down as we speak. And so for the remainder of the evening tonight, it's going to be fairly quiet. Here's a look at current conditions 87 degrees out there winds were breezy earlier but they have since calmed and when you look at this evening's forecast again only an isolated shower is possible until about eight and then after sunset it's going to be mostly clear and relatively uh, mild here's a look at the weather setup are you getting weather deja vu yet? It's usually been around this time of the evening that we've seen some severe weather starting to form across the panhandle, and that's going to be the case again tonight. And notice that any storms that develop typically follow this upper level wind uh, coming in from the north and from the west. You can see that some storms did that near San Angelo before dying down, down around San Antonio. And so early tomorrow morning, there is only a 20% chance for a storm to make it to San Antonio. Odds are low, even lower than they were this morning, but it's something that I want to put on your radar from about 7 to 10, a 20% chance for an isolated shower or a storm. Then by noon, it'll be 82. It's going to be partly cloudy tomorrow, and we'll be looking at a high right near 88. So a very similar day to today uh, on deck for us for your Thursday. Here's a look at those neighborhood highs tomorrow. 85 in Kerrville, 92 in Del Rio, 88 in Beeville. It'll be 87 in Gonzalez, 89 in Pleasanton, and 93 in Catula. I want to show you a preview of Memorial Day weekend. Mostly going to be quiet for us for the extended three-day weekend. Quiet and warm, a high temperature of 88 on Saturday, 89 on Sunday. And I do have to mention, I think we'll be dodging a few downpours on Monday, Memorial Day itself. Really only looking at about 20% coverage, but it is something that I want to let you know. And by the way, a lot of people are going to be hitting the water on Memorial Day weekend. Here's a look at those current lake levels. Our lakes are, are struggling. I mean, Amistad is down uh, to only 30% full. Medina Lake, only 5% full. Even Canyon Lake, which doesn't see too much water fluctuation, only 76% full. In spite of the fact that we've had some good rains, our lakes could use some more. And after that small window on Thursday morning, tomorrow morning, it doesn't look like we're going to see any 
big rainmakers apart from a couple of downpours on Monday Memorial Day itself. Regardless, we'll continue to keep you updated, but we have seen good rain. In fact, we've seen more rain this year so far than we did all year last year. I've got the details coming up at six. Yeah, that is a good thing. Thanks, Sarah. All right, he was their number one draft pick. But he's not number one on their roster, Andrew. No, we're talking about C.J. Stroud, who was second overall pick by the Houston Texans. In fact, this is still Davis Mills' job. He's taking first-team reps at OTAs. They're trying to make C.J. Stroud earn it. When we come back, we'll hear from Stroud on how he, things are going so far. Plus, rookies feeling at home already in Big D. Got that too next. Making some strong throws, good reads, um, good decisions, and, uh, and that's really a, a, a good good thing to start with a with a rookie quarterback coming in, being able to make the right decisions, know when to throw it, know when to pull it down. Texans rookie quarterback C.J. Stroud is already impressing the vets in big board sports. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Now two days into organized team activities, quarterback C.J. Stroud is still taking snaps from the second team. Davis Mills is taking first team reps at QB. Now sure, Stroud is the second overall pick, but the Texans are trying to make him earn the starting job with the quarterback battle. On day one, most of Stroud's throws were shorter and accurate. Deep balls weren't on the menu yet, but it's all part of the learning process of learning a new team and a new offense. He's not the only one going through some growing pains, so is first-year head coach D'Amico Ryans. What does Stroud think of the job Ryans is doing in practice so far? He's a, uh, he's a young coach who uh, knows how it is to play in this league and play for the Texans, so he knows a lot about the city of Houston, knows what comes with playing here, and I mean, he's just been great, uh, very vocal. Um, he's really funny, too, so like, it's cool to have a coach that's not all stuck up all the time or like super mad, so uh, he's been amazing, though, uh, very transparent, uh, communication's been great, so um, yeah, he's going to be a great head coach. The Texans have today off. We'll return to action tomorrow. Cowboys have also started their OTAs, and participation might be voluntary, but Micah Parsons is on the field. The Cowboys superstar did practice on Tuesday at the Star in Frisco, but he's one of many vets working out during the first two phases of the offseason program. A reminder, there isn't any physical contact between players at these workouts, just drills, weightlifting, and formation work. That gives the rookies a chance to build off of their work from rookie minicamp alongside the vets. Rookies like defensive lineman Viliami Fajoko Jr., Fahoko is Polynesian. He's proud of his Tongan heritage. The main concept between Polynesian culture is a love of family, and he already feels right at home in Dallas. You know, family's already here. Um, I can feel it in the, the meeting rooms. I can feel it with the coaches, and even uh, some of the vets that I've been talking to this week. Um, you know, they're so welcoming. So, family's here, and, you know, I feel like this is the best fit for me, and I feel like I'm home. You know, it's funny, Deuce Vaughn, obviously son of a Cowboys yeah. scout. So there's a lot of family connections going around in the Cowboys facility right now. Exciting time. Yes, it is. Yeah. Thanks, Andrew. We'll be right back. A lot like this morning, there's a small window tomorrow morning for a few showers. But generally, the weather pattern is going to be warm and humid in the coming days, including for the start of Memorial Day weekend. We'll be near 90 degrees. I do have to say on Memorial Day, I think we will be dodging a few thunderstorms. Nothing out of the ordinary, but something I just wanted to put on everybody's radar. Keep the Case Out Weather Authority handy as you're planning that extended weekend. Otherwise, stay cool. All right, thank you, Sarah. Don't forget about our special tonight at 9 o'clock, A Year in Uvalde. So many incredibly important stories to share. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here at 6.